What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to go over one of the most basic topics of all time and that's how to Google as a programmer. And what I mean by that is to how how you're actually supposed to be doing your Google searches as a programmer because it seems like whenever somebody's asking me a question, it's something that is usually something you could just look up online, something that you could have literally typed into Google and found the answer and you would have had the code right alongside with it. And usually when people ask me, hey, how do you do this? What I do is I Google search it and I just send them how to do it. <laughs> That's usually what ends up happening, honestly, guys. So I'm gonna show you guys how I Google just so that you guys could be a little bit more effective when you're Googling in case you don't know some of these, these tips that I'm about to go over. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll be able to find better results and essentially become a better programmer. So let's just jump right on into it and let's go ahead and open Google right on up. And as you can see, we're just gonna start off with the regular Google search bar or whatever. I, I mean, I usually go up here in the browser, but you know, go wherever. Now, the first thing that you're actually gonna wanna do when you're trying to find out an answer to something when you're about to Google is to actually know what you're searching for. Because if you just type in something very vague and generic, you're not gonna get the results that you want. Let's, let's give it a try right now. So if we were to do something like how to save data on the iPhone, um, you would get probably all kinds of different things and it's probably not even going to be technical, right? Like it's not even going to be like Swift related or Objective-C related. It's just going to be like your average person like article on how to do one of these things. And that's not what we want. So you got to know what technologies you're actually looking for. So in the, in the case of trying to save data to the phone, you might want to be using something like core data. So you might want to type in core data and then as soon as you type in some type of search result that is related to the technology check that out right there that's pretty cool um, as soon as you type in a search result that's related to the technology that you're looking for you're going to get much better results because now google's going to know what you're actually looking for now the next thing that you want to do when you're googling is if you're running into an error like over here, I have a crash program, right? And what I want to do is I, I ran into this error. I get this stack trace. You don't want to really do anything with this stack trace. It's not going to really help you. But what you want to do is you want to go all the way up to the first line that right before it says first throw call stack, right before that is going to try to give you like a human readable um, explanation of what's going on in your app. So you would just go right over here how to make that a little bit big, bigger for you guys. Let's just go right over here next to where it says reason. It's a great spot to start at, right? And what you wanna do is you just go ahead and copy this error and we're gonna just throw this right into Google like so and we're gonna see what comes back. Now, right now, as you can see, about one result came back. So let's go ahead and check on it and let's see if it's giving us any helpful information. We go down, you know, there is one answer right here. It may or may not be related to the, um, the problem that I'm having. And if you aren't giving um, something that's related uh, to what you're looking for, as you can see, this one's called Weather Proto. Obviously, I'm not gonna find anything out there called Weather because that's what my app is. So maybe I delete the parts that aren't relevant to my app. So maybe this unrecon unrecognized selector sent to instance will give me better results. And as you can see, now we're getting uh, a couple more results and I can go through here and maybe I'll find, um, you know, an answer that I'm looking for. Uh, you know, maybe I go over here and it's telling me, hey, you know what? This is the problem. You might want to check it out. And that's how you're going to solve that problem. Now, the next thing that you want to do when you're Googling something, especially when you're working on a programming language or working with a programming language is to actually use that programming language or that framework that you're working with as the first uh, word in your search result. And what I mean by that is like most of us are Swift programmers that are probably watching this. So what you would want to do is you would want to type in Swift before whatever it is that you're searching for so that you're going to get something that's related to Swift. Now you might still get something that's related to Objective C, but you'll almost never get anything that's like related to Android or like web development or anything like that. So once again, if I were to just type in Swift and then save data to the iPhone, then once again, I'm going to get a lot better results than that original first search that I did where it was just saying save data to the iPhone. 
because now look at how to save local data in a Swift app. So this is something that might be really relevant to me. I can go over here to the Stack Overflow post and you know get my answers there. The next tip that I have for you is to actually use some of these um, special characters in your search results. So once again, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a core data search. And let's say that I wanted to search for, you know, Swift core data. And I also wanted to make sure that there was um, something like saving a user. So what I would do is I would type in what I think my search result is going to be. So based off of the past couple of tips, you can kind of see that the way that I structure some of my search results, it's going to be starting off with the word Swift. I'm going to include the technology that I'm planning on working with and then whatever else that I'm going, whatever I'm trying to accomplish. In this case, I'm trying to save a user object, right? So when we search for this, we're going to get a lot of different things that come up, right? And maybe we want a full tutorial maybe we don't want like apple developer documents because when we go to the the docs maybe we're not able to read the doc the documentation right so i don't want um just the documentation i want a tutorial so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and type in tutorial once again it's going to refine my search but i'm still going to get back some stuff that isn't going to be exactly what i want like in regards to tutorials so let's just say i really want to make sure that it is a tutorial and that i'm guaranteed to get a tutorial back the first set of special characters that you can use are the quotes. So if you just include quotes around whatever is important in your search result that must be included, then it's going to make sure that all your search results that you get back are going to include that specific word. So in this case, I'm going to do it around tutorial. And I want you to take a look at the current results. 1,740,000, right? So it sounds like some type of Doctor Strange thing, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to put quotes around tutorial and that's going to actually change some of the results that come back now ray wenderlich you know he puts out great content all the time and he's definitely going to be ranking up there almost every time but as you can see if you were to look at some of the other search results that came back it's a little bit different it's a little bit more refined it's making sure that the word tutorial is included somewhere in that article and you can do this multiple times so like if you wanted to make sure that it was spelled or it, it was exactly core data two separate words once again you could do the same thing all these are really going to be the same you know in this specific example but that's another thing that you can do but let's say that you know what i already went to ray wenderlich's site and i actually don't want any tutorials by ray wenderlich for whatever re reason right so what you could do is you can exclude um specific words as well and what i can do is i can exclude the word ray wenderlich and the way that i do that is using the special character hyphen or minus or whatever so now when i do minus ray wenderlich as you can see i'm not getting anything that's coming back with ray wenderlich in it and maybe you want to do this because you're you're coming across these same keywords that that are showing up in your search results and that's not what you want so using um, a hyphen or a minus or whatever you want to call it uh, before the word is going to make sure that it's excluded from your results and it's also going to minimize the amount of results that you're getting back now we're down to sixty-five thousand, which is you know it's still a lot but it's relatively a more reasonable number now the next special character that you can enter into here is the asterisk and the asterisk is just the little star so I'm just going to call it a little star and you can throw the little star in here uh, to replace a word if you think that that word might be causing more harm than it is doing good. So in this case look at our search term. So far we have a little bit of everything but I'm thinking well maybe I don't want to just specify user maybe I want to save objects in general to co core data right so what i could do is i could put an asterisk right here and now what that's going to do is it's going to just say it doesn't matter what goes right here as long as we're saying saying saving something object that's going to be that's going to help our search results and as you can see it limited it down to just one so based off of everything that we put in here this is supposed to be the best result for us so it's going to really narrow it down now whether or not this is going to be the exact article that you're looking for you know i don't know uh, if you do it right then it probably will but since i'm doing this kind of on the fly it might not be as you can see it's in objective c so if we were to mandatory put swift in in quotes then we would probably get no results that's just something to keep in mind 
But um, yeah, those are three key characters that you could put in there. The, the double quotes, the asterisk, and the minus sign. And that's pretty much all I ever use. I, I hardly actually ever use the asterisk unless I'm copying copying and pasting a, a error directly into the search bar. I usually just use the, the double quotes and the minus, and that usually gets me the results that I'm looking for. Now, the last tip that I have for you guys on Googling is just to include whatever top, like whatever type of content you're actually trying to consume, right? So include that into your search results. So as you saw, um, I use the I use the hyphen in order to get rid of uh, the Ray Wenderlich searches, but sometimes I want to go f uh, specifically for Ray Wenderlich. So what I can do is I can actually include that into the search result. So as you can see, I'm going to do Swift Core Data Ray Wenderlich, and now I'm going to be guaranteed to get more Ray Wenderlich tutorials, and anything that's revolving around Core Data is obviously going to pop. So as you can see, everything that's popping up on this site is all Ray Wenderlich stuff. Now, it's not always going to be like that. It's just because he has so much content um, that this is happening. But um, yeah, this is one way, like, if you know that you want a, a good tutorial, then Ray Wenderlich is a good person to go go to. If you know that you want, you know, really quick to the point, just knowledge from like a knowledge base, then maybe you want to do Paul Hudson, which is what I do a lot. And I just type in, um, you well, since I already have uh, Swift in there, you could just do um, hack or hacking. Um, Either should usually work, but hacking, if you throw hacking in there, uh, Paul Hudson's results are going to always come up. And as you can see, it's going to bring up like all his good stuff. And then later on down here, it'll be like somebody else. Right. But like for the first couple of results, it's all hacking with Swift. So if you really wanted to get specific type of content uh, or like a specific creator, then you can do that. You could do that with Kilo Loco, too. Um, another thing that I also want to say it kind of in regards to this is that you can choose the type of um, website you want to go to. Like, let's say you wanted to make sure that you go to Stack Overflow, right? So you can just type in Stack Overflow and that's going to give you all the Stack Overflow results. And another one that I like to do a lot is if I'm trying to read a lot more about the, the topic because I need a better understanding, then I'll just go ahead and type in Medium. This way I get a bunch of Medium blog posts and I get a, a explanation from there. You know, so these top three are Medium blog posts, and then you know maybe there will be a couple of other ones that aren't on Medium, but at least I know the couple, the first three will probably be Medium. So that's pretty much how I search. That's how I learn everything, guys. Honestly, when you guys see those memes on social networks where they're like uh, making fun of programmers just because. Uh, essentially no matter how much experience you have you're still searching like the most basic stuff that's what programmers do no matter how much experience you have you're always going to be searching even some of the most basic stuff i go back and watch my own videos sometimes just because i forget how to do something so if that doesn't tell you if that doesn't tell you that people can be good at coding without remembering everything then I don't know what will tell you that uh, because I'm sure that all the content creators watch their own content or consume their own content whenever they forget something. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope that you keep going out there and you keep coding passionately. Oh, yeah.